Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the interview uh, by the Community Heroes. I know it's been a minute since you've seen the interview from us. The summer has been busy, busy, busy. But today I am excited to interview someone that uh, I think has a unique and exciting story. Uh, we are going to be talking with Ms. Francia Pios. And uh, I just want to say thank you for letting us interview you today. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. I'm excited to be here with Community Heroes. All right. So for those looking right now, uh, as you know, I'm always online trying to find something exciting and new uh, that focuses on raising awareness for the special needs population and, you know, just uh, individuals who face barriers in general. So uh, I was re reading and I ran across a story. So I'm not going to go into it. I'm going to have to talk about it, but I'm going to jump into my questions. So the first thing, uh, uh, Francia, can you just tell our listeners today about a little bit about your hometown? Sure. I'm from San Diego. I attended school kindergarten through 12th grade here, public education prodigy over um, in San Diego. And then I attended San Diego State. So I've done all my education right here in San Diego. Okay, I've, I've never been to San Diego, but I've always seen like videos and, you know, I'm not a San Diego Chargers fan, but I don't go to a game, so I bought me tickets. So <laughs> that's, that's a plug if anybody wanna buy me some San Diego Chargers tickets. <laughs> well, they're not San Diego Chargers anymore. They're Los Angeles Chargers. That's right, you know what, see? Oh man, no, don't no, no let my age show. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, our next, my next question, uh, can you just tell me a little bit about your uh, educational background? Sure, I hold a master's degree in special education, so that's my focus. And I recently have achieved a micro-credential in ethnic studies, along with all kinds of other certificates along the way from the peers curriculum, which is how to incorporate socialization and relationship skills for people with autism specific, but it can be adapted to other areas as well. Okay. And yeah. Uh, so, um, so my, my, uh, even though you tell us, uh, you a little bit about your background, but as far as, I guess, working in the field of special education, about how long have you been in that, in that particular area? Specifically to special education, I have been focused for about eight years now. Prior to the eight years, I spent 10 years in general education with a sprinkle of special ed in those 10 years, which really ignited and interested me. So I decided to change my focus into special education and I have been such an advocate and I am so empowered by the students own motivation and their dedication to their learning that it just keeps me fueled to do more. Yeah. And then that, that question kind of was perfect for me to transition into the next one I wanted to ask, uh, especially with uh, special education. Uh, so the, the main reason for why I wanted to really bring you up here is the Social Justice League that I read about online. Uh, if you can just kind of you know, talk a little bit about what sparked that idea and, and how, how it's going now, if it's still going. Sure, yes, it's still going. It, well, we're on summer break now, so it'll start again in the fall, but Social Justice League was a class focused for people with disabilities specific to our school population that we could gather and discuss the racism, the social injustice, the oppression that occurs in our society. And it was sparked by the death and murder of George Floyd. So with that incident, my students were accessing this video on all kinds of social media and I didn't find it that there was no one there to help them discuss and dissect what was really happening. So I said, let me create a group. So I, I enlisted this, the support from school-wide, anyone who wanted to join and provide input for my ideas could come to this meeting, Zoom, and we discussed like, okay, here's my idea. 
this is what I want to do. And it shifted and it came to me using the book, The Hate You Give, as kind of like the springboard into conversations. Well, with a lot of our student population, their reading levels are not strong enough to read a book that lengthy. So then I adapted my curriculum once again to use the movie version. So I created two curriculum, um, one using the book and one using the movie. So we decided to use the movie as our basis for gathering each week and we would watch the movie in clips. And each clip was dedicated to a specific topic, whether that was, you know, what is redlining? What is, you know, what do you see in this movie clip? And then we dissected some of the vocabulary used and where it originated from. So it was fantastic and it, it created such a unity with students that I brought it back for a, a second time during the school year using ethnic <laughs> studies. And then one more time to end it using identity for Social Justice League, which focused on who they are. So we discussed their disabilities. A lot of our students didn't really know their disabilities and their rights. So we discussed the IDEA, the, I, the Americans with Disabilities Act and how these protections help them succeed in society and society helps them succeed by having these protections as well. Okay, awesome. Um, I, I, like I said again, uh, I can't re reiterate how I just think that was just a cool idea to come up with that, especially for uh, that particular population. Uh, that's often, if, if uh, I guess if, if you haven't had the opportunity to work in special needs education, uh, you you may not get the full ramification of being able to have a platform where you can fully express how you may be feeling at any time. And I guess that's why this resonates so much with me because I just thought it was it was, it's kind of ahead of its time as far as using something to help uh, this population express uh, how they feel and what they know. So, yeah. and I, I, I can go on and on about, how, uh, about that, but uh, I'm, I'm going to jump to the next question. So, we kind of, uh, my next question was going to be what inspired you. We kind of talked about that, um, but then you kind of touched into the other thing about the, the digital uh, books. Uh, the digital book and how you use the movie. So, um, from my notes that I have, uh, it said that the, the one book was entitled Ethnic Studies. So, um, so I, I guess this is the actual content book that you, you created yourself and, and put out. Um, and I, I, did, I, I would love to see that, see it myself. Um, maybe when we get off, we'll talk more about that. But, uh, and uh, with with that, uh, how uh, how long did it take you to complete that that book? <laughs> so the first book, I think I worked on it for a good like four to five weeks because I was dissecting each clip and then finding resources that would help reinforce the ideas of those clips. So I had to do some research and then find either YouTube videos or recreate a worksheet digitally because you know we were still on distance learning at the time so everything had to be online so i had to fidget with the google i used a lot of google google forms google slides all of it so i i really played around with the resources that i could access and my students could access easily because i didn't want them to be turned off by this is too hard i can't navigate it and then give up and thankfully they all used everything that I provided for them. Yeah. Quick, quick plug in. Google's listening to this. this she, she, she used Google a lot, Google. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a Google certified level one educator, which I am thankful that I attended because then about 10 days later is when we went into a full lockdown and my school really leaned on me with my Google skills to build their Google website, and like I said, all kinds of great resources using Google. So thank you, Google. <laughs> and that's something. And I, and I just, on a personal note myself, and I, I just said, God knows how to put people in situations or circumstances, because it's kind of ironic after you got certified all of a sudden, like I said, the, 
impact of the pandemic took its toll on yeah. school system. So um, that's just something. So I want to jump to my uh, my next question, um, which you kind of touched on that a little bit, uh, which was the resources that you use. So we talked a little bit about Google, uh, um, but were there like any, I guess, outside community resources that you kind of leaned on maybe for guidance to uh, really make this this platform with uh, teams, uh, I guess, a, a, a reality, something that, you know, you can really put out there and say, okay, this is what needs to happen. Yeah, I kind of was my own little island. So I would, you know, go out and fish, and I would fish for information from seasoned teachers specifically in ethnic studies. San Diego Unified has a fantastic ethnic studies advisory committee. That's how I was able to become a multi, uh, I'm sorry, a micro credentialed educator in ethnic studies was through San Diego Unified. So I reached out to the lead teachers to help me to guide me. I also reached out to the San Diego Unified ethnic studies resource teachers to kind of provide an extra set of eyes and help me edit or enhance the ethnic studies workbook that I created. And then I've, I bounced ideas off of my colleagues. But my resources that I used a lot were TED Talks. And I found a lot of TED Talks that were perfect for the ideas that would rattle in my head. And then I would also use a lot of my own self-created documents, um, slides to present the information and to lead the students into discussions. The last thing that I love is YouTube. YouTube provided a lot of music for my slides to also provide an extra enhancement that we also later um, used for building a social justice playlist, our, our trace playlist on Spotify. So our students would provide like, oh, this song makes me feel good. So then we would add it to the playlist. So they are they all have access to this playlist on Spotify. So that was another layer to our class. It wasn't just this heavy content. Let's also focus on our well-being and our mental health. Okay, I got um, two more questions then, and then uh, we'll be wrapping up. So my, my next question is, uh, for the viewers that will be watching this interview, could you please just let them know if they would love to just know about uh, more about you or just uh, social justice League, when they can contact you? Sure. I'm on Facebook, on Instagram. So you guys can just Google my name, you guys. I, I'm a very unique name, and you guys can find my handles there. So please connect, and I hope that everyone that connects find something valuable in this interview and in the work that we've been doing for social justice. And the last question, so uh, the last one, um, and, I, and would you like to maybe talk about um, one major milestone you could think of, uh, especially during the pandemic and the creation of the uh, social justice league, you'd just like to share with us before we finish the interview? Sure, I think, um, the largest milestone is the connections made. And that is one thing I am, you know, as terrible as this pandemic has been, it does have some positives. So Zoom has been such an amazing platform to connect with people. I'm way across the country from you and here we are connecting because you happened to stumble upon the article read. So the connections I think is the biggest milestone and sharing the content of my work with others. I am happy to share that. I am giving it away for free. So if anyone is interested in seeing my books, my workbooks, um, please reach out to me, uh, email me, however you'd like to get that uh, workbook out specifically for people with disabilities. I would love to continue that work and make sure it happens. Awesome, yes, uh, well, I just want to say thank you again so much for allowing me to share your story. Uh, and, and you're right, like I said, we're we're completely miles away from each other, and uh, you know, 
just with the, the presence of raising awareness with special needs and, and the focus of uh, all inclusiveness, everyone being able to obtain content, you know, we're able to have this interview today, you know, because of the internet and sharing the media uh, and stuff like that. So I'm just, I just thank God for that. So again, listeners, uh, please reach out uh, to Francia. I really enjoyed her interview. Uh, I would love to interview you again, maybe down the road, just to see how things are going, maybe around the new year. Uh, All right. Yeah. All right. So, thank you, Tyrone, and for doing yeah. the work that you do with Community Heroes. Thank you. So again, everyone, um, thank you. Remember, before you leave YouTube or wherever you go in, you know, comment, like, subscribe, and be on the lookout for our next video.